in first uh, timothy chapter 3 verse 16 if i'm quite sure uh, uh no second timothy uh think it has to be second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 yes second timothy 3 16 uh now the lord uh no uh let me bear with me here i'm still oh i'm pulling up something else yeah i'm not i wasn't pulling up uh the right passage yeah i was right second first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 i was in a different uh i was pulling up something else now uh first uh, timothy 3 16 says beyond all question the mystery from which true godliness springs is great he appeared in the flesh which is referring to jesus christ he appeared in the flesh was vindicated by the spirit was seen by angels was preached among the nations was believed on in the world was taken up in glory what description fit that jesus christ jesus christ so here i'm saying that god had to since sin has to be paid for and sin cannot just be swept under the rug like we usually say here and sin cannot be the payment of that sin um it, it, it is not god want to introduce into his system of annihilation because throughout judeo christian scriptures uh, you don't find the doctrine of annihilation the doctrine of annihilation is inconsistent with the judeo christian scriptures so some or those who want to say that well all things are going to be annihilated so if god if that what god wants to do why number one why didn't he didn't he destroy adam and eve when he first realized that they had already violated his commandment and transgressed his statutes and ordinances why didn't god just kill them or destroy them so he can start all over again because that will be in a form of annihilation right yes of course and if that is what it is then god doesn't have to come here in the person of jesus christ as we saw in first timothy chapter 3 verse 16 or as we see in john 3 16 say for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son if there is there is a system or a system of annihilation which will probably bring about a doctrine of annihilation then there is no need for god to come in the person of jesus christ to die for mankind or for mankind's sin in order for evil to be appeased i believe i have chosen my because a lot of things i'm saying here usually i write words down but no so I, I just want to bring to your attention that no there is nothing known as in 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 the christian doctrine there is nothing in here that that uh uh say supports the doctrine of annihilation because that is very inconsistent with god's nature because number one if there is anything like that adam would have been destroyed god wouldn't have wait till he went to a shameful cross heinous painful death for us no god wouldn't wouldn't have done that if there is a system that god had put in place to deal with that which will probably give us any knowledge of doctrine of, of annihilation there's nothing like that that is very inconsistent with the word of god so going back to this is why in romans 3 23 the bible says 
all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Because in Romans 5, 12, the Bible says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, so death came through sin, through sin, and in this way, death came to all people. All right, through one man, death came into the I mean, into the sin, into the world through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. This is why Paul was bringing us, uh, uh, bringing our attention uh, to how sinful we are, based on Romans three twenty three. All sin and fall short of the glory of God. All because all it because it is Adam through one man through one man in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 also uh, solidify the same uh, uh, principle as if for in for us in Adam all die so all of us are in Adam and then those of you who say but uh, what, what about the flood Beth came through Adam <laughs> before the flood right and so during the flood the bible says eight individuals were saved right noah his wife three sons and their wives and so so uh, in in according to first corinthians chapter 15 verse 22 say for us in adam or die so in christ all will be made alive this is why christians talk about Come to Jesus, give your life to Christ, commit your ways to Christ, believe in Him, put your trust in Him, and commit, uh, I mean, and, and, and give, you know, total confidence in Him. Because He was the only one that qualifies uh, to, to, to go to the cross. Again, remember, sin had to be atoned for. The only, the, there is no any other option. There is no any other option. It has to be. It has to be paid for by life. And the only one who could pay that was Christ, and who could also overcome death is Christ. This is why Christ resurrected. If Christ had not resurrected, our payment would not be in full. <laughs> yes. If Christ had not resurrected, that payment would never be in full. But he res after his resurrection, he told Christians that now we are sealed with the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. You know, the, the sealing of the Holy Spirit is like those of you who have been involved in real estate or have purchased, you know, some real estate. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you, you sign your document and you call the ask for earnest money. It doesn't have to be you know, just something to, to hold on, you know, to, 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 to grant you that no one can be given that piece of, because it's in the agreement, the contract was drawn. It, it, that payment, as little as it is, no one can, unless there has been a change. So when Christ, if Christ did not, Christ did not only die for the sin, but he, re he resurrected to prove that he's the only one qualified to make an atonement for our sins. So again, the source of all evil. So when you think about the source of all evil today, on someone, someone asked you, uh, where do you think where, where is all this evil? Where is all this suffering? Where is God when all these sufferings are going on? Yes, it's right here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And God had to deal with it according to his own standard. And again, why others are not, did not believe in God? God has given us free will either to respond to his love or to reject it. Either to choose his ways of righteousness or to say no. Just like he said, he says that a fool say in his heart that there is no God. 
in in essence what that passage is saying is that a fool said to god no so anybody that says to god no god called that individual a fool god is not saying okay uh you you are not intelligent enough no once you say no to god and god also says something about about uh the wisdom of this world which he says is also stupidity and foolishness so wisdom that uh, doesn't have its solidity uh, in God that wisdom will be considered yeah this side of you know so uh, minister pastor are you telling me that no you see God has a standard and everyone must come to him by his standard too I remember a um, couple of days ago, I was evangelizing, uh, doing evangelism uh, in uh, on the streets of uh, uh, Michigan here in, in downtown. And I brought an analogy of the fact that when everyone, you know, when you, you, you apply for a job, uh, you turn in your resumes, your CVs or whatever, whatever, you know, you are required, you know, and uh, after all that, they, they, they looked through and they scheduled uh, an interview for you. And when you, are, uh, 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 when you sell through that interview, uh, they, could, they take you through orientation. During the orientation, what they do is they give you an uh, uh, employee handbook. In that handbook, that handbook tells you everything you need to know, your dress code, uh, your code of conduct, your behavior, character, everything is in there. You have to follow the content of that handbook. Why do you think that is? Because if you violate anything given to you in that book, maybe depending on you know the, the organization's rules and regulations, maybe you are given warning, maybe subsequent times, maybe you are suspended. And then eventually you are fired because you do not go by the uh, the code of conduct or whatever it is that is written in that employee handbook or the company's handbook that gives you everything you need to know in order for you to maintain your position in that company during your term of employment. So it is with God. God's handbook for his children or for the world is the Bible. That's what it is. And in this book, which I'm reading to you from my uh, uh, gadget, in this book, it tells you the way he loves you, the way he cares about you, the way he has you on his heart, how he thinks about you how how marvelous you are in his sight how great he thinks about you irrespective of what you are going through how much he loves you unconditionally as a matter of fact in 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 uh uh romans chapter uh five verse eight let me pull up something quick here i'm throwing a lot of passages at you but bear with me romans 5 8 says that let me start from 6 6 and 8 says something very poignantly it said you see uh you see at just the right time when we were still helpless christ died for the ungodly verse 8 says but god demonstrates his own love for us in this while we were still sinners christ died for us that is romans chapter 5 verses 6 verse 6 and 8 and so god's uh, handbook of life is the bible and in that book or in in this book he tells you how much he loves you 
You see what we saw in Romans 5, 6? So while we were yet without, we were without power. I've told you that the, the, the requirement of the penalty for the sin is death. There's no substitute. We, we see that because of God's love for us, we can't do anything. You see, when it was time for him to do it, he did it with agape love. Agape love is divine love. Divine love chooses his own object. Amen. So, in his handbook, he also have a standard. It is the Bible. And he says, I love you. I care for you. And I don't want to spend eternity without you because I created you in my image and likeness. Why would I want to spend eternity without you? No way. I went to the cross. I gave my own life for your redemption. You blew it in Adam. But I had a plan in place. And I paid the full penalty for your sake. Because I don't want to spend eternity without you. Eternity is forever. He said, you don't know. The Bible says something in the book of Romans. He said, I have not sinned. Ears have not heard. Neither heart. For what God had prepared for us. Wonderful things we do not even know yet. And he said he doesn't want to spend eternity without us. Oh, I can't wait. And so he is the book of conduct or the handbook of life is the Bible. So the source of all evil is started with Adam. Who brought it upon Adam brought it upon himself because Adam could have said no. <laughs> okay. But he, he bought into it like you and I would do things that we can easily say no. He has that free will to say no. This is why even the Bible called uh, uh, Jesus Christ the second Adam. Do you know that Jesus Christ even, Jesus came here as a babe. Baby, you remember? I believe that Adam, when Adam was created, Adam might have looked like maybe between 30 and 35. Because God are always creates with maturity attached so adam there is no suggestion anyway in the scriptures when adam came as a babe as baby no no so but jesus jesus could have said no too because jesus was real man he was the man god but jesus did not walk here as hey i am god no he was this is what the bible says in hebrews 4 15 said we do not have a high priest, which he is, who cannot sympathize with our infirmities, who was tempted in all things but did not sin. So verse 16, that is why I said, therefore come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy for help in time of need. So Jesus could have also fall just like Adam did. This is why the Bible called Jesus the second Adam. But he paid the full price. How do we know he paid the full price for us? Because he overcame death. How did he do that? He resurrected. He resurrected on the third day. That is not a fairy tale. So the source of all evil stem out of Adam's disobedience. Then I want to leave you with uh, this passage. As more fact, um, Romans 5 verse 13 let me read from verse 13 on I want to bring something to your attention verse 13 says to be sure sin was in the world before the law was given but sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law you know the law came into being God's law came into being uh, into existence after the 430 years it was after the exodus that the law of God was given to the Israelites, which define every human activity anyway. Okay, so Paul is reminding us in verse 14, say, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses. Why Adam was mentioned here again? Because Adam was the first human through Moses. 
even over those who did not sin by breaking or by breaking a command as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come, who was Jesus Christ. Here, we all break we all break the law of God, not in the same similitude, not in the same sense Adam did, but it's we break the law anyhow. That is what the Bible is telling us here. Verse 15 says, But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the of, of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many. And again, the, the word many here, I believe that, you know, we are still, you know, we are still giving birth, you know, we are still, uh, procreation is still going on daily, you know, and many too is also signifies that it isn't everybody, you know, that is going to be, I mean, born, it's, it's going to go into where God wants us to be. Let me give you one more analogy, then I'll, I'll uh, read, finish the rest. Uh, I wanted to think with me from this perspective. Let's say uh, you and I, right? Let's say I grew up and um, all I knew was nothing but alcoholism, uh, abuse of drugs, uh, spend a lot of time in the strip clubs, uh, do anything that is far away from what the Bible calls righteousness. That's me, okay? And you, you grew up with purity, righteousness. You don't always go to church, but your mind is, is you are far away from what I'm practicing, okay? Then, all of a sudden, you want me, okay, to come to where you usually, where you say by now let's say you are in your 70s maybe 80s and i'm in the same way right i was the same age and all of a sudden do, do you think i'll feel comfortable in that environment of yours no no way because i'm not used to that environment so i'll never feel comfortable never and and if you force me into that environment you'll be going against my will so think about god from that perspective so those who say that oh everyone go to heaven no even those who because you will not fit into that environment you 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 you'll be very uncomfortable and if god force you into that environment then that will make god unjust i know most of the times we don't think about it like that that will make god unjust and that means God is forcing something on you that you do not want. And moreover, you will not fit into that environment because you are not used to that lifestyle. Oh, I'm not used to that lifestyle, but you, that all through your life or somewhere along the way, you change your ways. And now you have cultivated righteousness, purity, holiness, and you now you you know how to glorify God irrespective of your situation irrespective of your circumstance you learn how to you know glorify God through it all so you're gonna fit in the realm of holiness perfectly God did not force you in there he 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 he, he presented you with the same uh, uh, option that was presented to me in my case i rejected it so god is not going to force me in into that realm number one i'll feel very uncomfortable number two that will make god unjust and unrighteous get it okay so um in verse 14 of romans chapter, romans chapter 5 the bible says nevertheless death reigned from the time of adam to the time of moses even over those who did not sin by breaking a command. Why would it bring it unto Moses? Because it was then that the law of God was given. 
Remember? So, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. Verse 15 of Romans chapter 5 says, But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to many. And again, you see here, gift, gift, gift. So eternity isn't something that you can pay for. So when you hear the doctrine of, oh, when I, I want to work hard. And when I get there, I want God to, to weigh my good deeds against my, my, my evil ways. No, it's a gift. You don't have to work for it. You see here that it's, it's, it's consistent. Gift, gift, gift. It's a, the, the, the free gift, which is eternity. It is not something you work for. <laughs> no. No, you don't work for it. It's a gift. It's consistent in the word of God. Oh, amazing. Amazing how, how consistent the word of God is. So consistent. Look here. In, in Romans 5 verse 15, it says, But the gift is not like the trespass. What gift? eternity what is mentioned of in romans 6 23 the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life in jesus christ and the gift here is still he said the gift is oh god is it for if the many die by the trespass of the one man how much more did god's grace and the gift that came by grace of the one man, Jesus Christ overflow to many. And then verse 16 says, Nor can the gift, again, here comes the word again, the gift. Eternity is not something you work for, brothers and sisters. It is the gift of God. I want to bring another passage in here, but I want to wait. And so, and it says that uh, uh, verse 16, Nor can the gift, nor can the gift, of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. Cannot be compared with that because how do you compare a gift with sin? The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed. Hey, here again, gift, gift, gift. Gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Justification is acquittal. That's the big word in theological studies justification is acquittal it's like you present your case to the judge now think about clemency think about clemency you know every 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 uh united states uh, uh, uh president usually during their final terms usually you know they, they grant clemency and and when that happens the public goes ballistic you know from both realms of the political arena you know and say no, that man does not deserve that. No, that woman does not deserve that. I say, duh, that is why it is called clemency. It's undeserving. <laughs> that is why it is called like that. You don't deserve it. <laughs> you don't merit it. So here, it's saying, so justification is acquittal. It's, it's, you did it, but I've shed my blood for you. I let you go free. Okay, so verse 17 of uh, 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 Romans chapter 5 says, For if by the trespass of one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness, here comes the word again, the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Again, again, eternity it's gift in Jesus Christ. It is not something you work for. So in order for you to, you know, uh, why all these, you know, uh, uh, sufferings and all of that. Yes, the sufferings are going to be here until Christ came to skin time. Or God eradicated this and restored things back to its original purpose. You and I, for now, we cannot do anything about that, but, but what we can do is to commit our life to Christ. Anyway, verse 18 of Romans chapter 5 says, Consequently, or consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, 
So also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. Amen. And then verse 19 says, For just as through the disobedience of one man the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man the many will be made righteous. Verse 20, the law was brought in so that the trespass might increase. But where sin increased, hallelujah, grace increased all more. What else do you want? And verse 21 says, so that just as sin reigned in death, sin reigned in death. Meaning, sin always has to be paid for by the capital penalty. That's what it is. Sin always has to be paid for. But thank God. And Jesus Christ said, verse 21 says, So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace might reign. Might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh Lord, have mercy. God is so good. And here, this is why we need to commit our life to Christ because Romans 14, 12 says that, so then each one of us will give an account of ourselves to God. This is going to be individual. Listen to what Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 20 says. The one who sins is the one who will die. Again, singular, okay? The child will not share the guilt of the parent, nor will the parent share the guilt of the child. Again, solidify the singularity and also the individuality of giving an account of oneself to God, just all by yourself, all right? And then he continued by saying that the righteousness of the righteous, the righteousness of the righteous will be credited to him and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. The righteousness of the righteous. Where do you find righteousness? In Jesus Christ. 